Most people think when nuclear power plant is running that you're somehow getting energy from the atom directly. No. What you're doing is splitting the atom, as it were, creating a lot of heat that boils water, heats water, it turns a steam engine like a choo-choo train in 1849 coming out to the gold rush in California. That's all a nuclear power plant is, except you're stuck with a million years of waste. And this is the other problem, the distribution of the power from the point that you have the primary source by the time you generate it, transmit it through the inefficient transmission lines, and then the, your, your wiring in your device or your home, you've lost at least 66%. So 66% of the energy is completely wasted. So here's your energy grid. 12% is a new renewable. The rest is the old system. So if you plug in your electric car, 88% of the power is coming from gas and oil and coal. The entire world is running on an energy paradigm of scarcity, meaning that there's never more energy than we generate. And we lose that energy as we move it around and deploy it in different ways. And so energy is expensive. And it, energy is difficult to get to remote areas. And the energy is important because it's inputs in growing food and its inputs in manufacturing, and its inputs in the economy, and its inputs in all of these things that make people's lives better and that solve the problems that desperately need to be solved on the planet right now. Overunity is a very simple idea. It's that you're getting more energy out of something than you're putting into it. And according to mainstream science, that's impossible. What free energy devices suggest is that there is a limitless supply of usable energy that's always coming into reality and that we're not living in a universe of fundamental scarcity. So overunity is more than just a breakthrough that's going to live its life in a technical paper. It's not that. It's really the ability of humans to liberate themselves. Yes, there is a history, a long history of overunity systems. For example, Nikola Tesla had one. Basically, his big magnifying transformer that he had in, on Long Island was such an overunity system. He got the entire Earth itself in resonance. Everything going on is feeding energy into the Earth starts to feed energy into that wave that he created. So he gets a lot more energy in his resonant wave fed from outside, from the environment in the interior of the Earth. His idea was you could then put in a a tap on it anywhere else on the world and extract it free. And of course, J.P. Morgan's take on that was, that's foolish, you can't put a meter on it. So that uh, actually doomed much of Tesla's career at that point when Morgan found out that he, Tesla, was going to produce the energy freely. But I love this quote, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Now the reason he said that is that when you use what's called a very high voltage system, you can tap in to what Professor Casimir called the zero point energy field. Some people call it the quantum vacuum. Other people, like Professor Dirac, modestly called it the Dirac C. And we just tested a device last month in the Arizona desert, you'll see in a moment, that is based on that. Nobody is really trying to get, for example, over unity more energy out of something than you put in because it's assumed that that is impossible. Well, that might be impossible, but only if you don't really understand the fabric of reality itself. They just can't believe it, especially engineers, because I, uh, I know how we were taught, right? There is no vacuum energy. You're just a coop when you think so, right? Uh, if they took a little more physics, they would go, well, maybe. It's not a small thing. It's not a matter of of finding proof for some technology, for some invention, and convincing everybody of it. You can't convince somebody of something that so totally contradicts their basic assumptions about the universe. But what if there's a pool of energy available to us that we didn't even think was possible because we're operating on these 100 plus year old assumptions? We can't find this excess energy simply because no one's looking for it. So-called empty space isn't really empty at all. It's actually full of energy. So instead of being like kind of a quiet, empty lake, it's more like the froth at the base of a waterfall or something. 
But when you go to look at the numbers, you find out that there's enough energy in the volume of a coffee cup to evaporate all the world's oceans if you could get it all up.